Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. I've done it. I purchased one from the first batch of Japan so we could see it before the US release. This is the Final Fantasy XIV Stratocaster. All right, so if you're not familiar with this particular game, don't worry, I'm gonna teach you all about it, as well as, you know, anime and video game guitars today. So, first off, what is Final Fantasy XIV? It's this. It's an MMORPG. If you don't know what that means, it stands for Massively Multiplayer Online Role-Playing Game. A computer game that a bunch of people can play at the same time. They do raids, they do quests, they have their own little home base that they can decorate, you can chat, you can do a whole bunch of stuff. It is a super popular franchise. But anyways, lately manufacturers have decided that, hey, I think we can do limited edition guitars within games and then actually sell the real guitar in person. So recently we saw Taylor did that with The Last of Us 2. That was a release last year. They did a signature Taylor acoustic. You can check out that review and demo right here. That was Ellie's guitar. But Fender Japan has done many of different anime guitars, like the Beck Telecaster, or just very recently Asuka's Tele from Neon Genesis Evangelion. Even Gibson has kind of gotten on this boat a little bit. They toyed around with the Goro Yuto Les Pauls in a custom shop and USA version. So this is the latest model, done up for Final Fantasy XIV. So let's go ahead and check this thing out before we learn a little bit more. All right, so our hard shell case here feels just like a, a standard hard shell case. Most made in Japan fenders don't actually get hard shell cases, so that's actually kind of nice. It's not the molded one though, it's just that vintage one, so not quite like the Asuka Tele. And as far as branding, we've got a little metal plate here that says Fender Final Fantasy XIV. Honestly, kind of feel left down about this case. Uh, I feel like they could have done a little bit more, but <laughs> at least this time we have a metal plaque on it instead of just a sticker that you can slap on for Ava's. But let's go ahead and take our first look here. Oh, wow. Okay, that is a really slick black finish. The smell that's coming from this case is, you know, those Chinese Fender cases. Very freshly, you know, created here, but there it is. All right. I gotta say, you know, I like it, but I'm not in love with it. Now granted, I don't play the game, so this is more so like an unbiased review in that opinion as far as what this thing is, but there are some very cool attributes that we can document on this, even as just a guitar channel. So first off, you've got the Meteor inlay right here that's done up in a perloid material, and that's mainly just to resemble the Final Fantasy franchise right here. And then what makes this whole thing special are fake crystal horns right here. That's kind of interesting in person. I was wondering how much of the guitar was this crystalline material and if you'd be able to see the wooden body through it. I was kind of expecting there to be a bit more blue showing. That's actually very, very dark in person. And then obviously everything else is blacked out here and you've got the rosewood fretboard. It's all a black chrome finish for your stuff. Looks like they are serializing these things in order. This one happens to be number 87 and it's a gloss finish all over. You know, I, I've seen black Stratocasters before, but there's something a little bit different about this one. I mean, maybe it's because they actually painted the back of the neck, which Fender doesn't do on absolutely everything. But let's go ahead and learn a little bit more about this guitar within the game. So this is an item that you can actually purchase in the game. It's called an Aetheroelectric guitar, and it's only 3,000 MGP, which, according to a bunch of players, that's really cheap for a limited edition item like this thing. But you can buy it to decorate your home base, or you can play it in a live performance mode. Now, to be honest, it kind of sounds like crap in the game. It's just a really cheap, generic MIDI guitar sound. But, you know, it's kind of cool. You can play some Final Fantasy themes on it. One guy on YouTube was playing Iron Man. It's cool that they actually let you play the instrument. So my theory is, is they created those things in the game to be so inexpensive, that way everybody could buy them up and then somebody's gonna be like, oh yeah, I want that in my house for real, even if they don't play guitar. Because it's very surreal seeing this guitar in person after seeing it in a video game and being able to be played. It's kind of cool. I just wish there was a little bit more special with the guitar itself. Because in the game, this guitar glows. You see it on the wall, you can turn your lights down and it glows. And this, in person, it, it, it doesn't do that. 
<laughs> and the only reason why I kind of take some strife with that is these are not cheap in person. They are 396,000 yen, which is roughly 3,500 USD. And once you add in your shipping, import duties, and taxes, to purchase one of these things from Japan, it's going to cost you roughly $4,100. And that's if you were lucky enough to secure a first batch order, because Fender Japan has been cracking down on exporting their exclusive instruments. So yes, to have gotten this guitar, I kind of got lucky. I have my sources in Japan. These were first released in late October, but they're going to finish producing them in 2022. As far as I can tell, there has not been a 100% confirmed number of how many they plan to make. But this time, Fender Japan learned from their mistake on the Asuka Tele. So that one was initially a Japan exclusive guitar only. But then so many US guys were buying them from Japan, they decided way after that run that they were going to do a small run for the US market, which wasn't initially announced at launch. But this time, they did announce it. So sometime in 2022, let me tell you, these things are delayed for Japan, so I think you're probably going to be lucky if you get them by April of 2022. But you can can pre-order these within the US and not have to pay a premium unless you want one before everyone else. That's the only reason why you would pay a premium for one of these. Or, you know, inevitably when these things sell out, there's probably going to be a future market for these things. I mean, as of right now, it's kind of uncertain. It really just depends on how many do they make and how big of a demand is there for this instrument. So now that we kind of understand the game that this comes from, the guitar and how it's used within the game, as well as, you know, seeing it in person, I think the only thing that I haven't told you yet is this guitar can attack you. <laughs> they, they call this a limit break in the spec sheets. Essentially, it makes these two turn into like a humbucker-esque tone, but limit break is a move within the game that's like really powerful. So they decided to call the series switch the limit break. So, I mean, that's just a, a little bit of a fan service right there. But let's go ahead and see what kind of case candy we get with this thing. It looks like we have a giant booklet in here. Too big to fit in the case? Not necessarily. I'm not sure why they didn't put it there. So it's like a little leather bound booklet it says Fender Final Fantasy Online. And in here we have one of the characters from the game with the guitar singing to a little bird. You know, that's a nice little photo. And then over here you have your certificate of authenticity. It tells you what number you've got. I happen to get 87 and it actually gives me all the specs. That's nice. But do we get anything else fancy here? Okay, giant warranty pick. You know, normally these things are red, so the fact that it's black is kind of cool. And it looks like we get our trem bar arm that has a black tip, and it looks like it's all black chrome, just like the rest of the stuff on the instrument. And just your regular Fender stuff. So first impressions here, a little bit let down by this limited edition release. I was kind of hoping we would have something a little bit more special. Like if they would have found a way to make a light inside the guitar, you know, that way you can like flip a switch on the back and it actually starts to glow, then yeah, I could totally see the $3,500 price point. I mean, you guys have to understand, $3,500 for a made in Japan guitar is really expensive. Like sometimes they can be a little bit more, like $4,500 for super limited editions that get ultimately flame necks and things like that. But generally, Generally speaking, a, a made in Japan Fender, anywhere between like a thousand to two thousand bucks. So these things are being sold at a big premium. But I will tell you, it feels good. They took some time and attention to detail. Unfortunately, we don't have that like really cool, almost lacquered like fretboard that sometimes you do get on the rosewood boards for Japan. But the gloss finish does feel really nice. So, without any further ado, let's go ahead and throw this on the workbench, take an individual look at its parts and specs, make sure I'm not missing anything, and then we'll get to that playing demo and uh, try to do some Final Fantasy-like songs. I was practicing those last night. Inside Square Enix's Fender guitar here. Let's go ahead and check this thing out. So, the body itself is made out of alder, and these little crystal bits, they essentially, they took the guitar, they saw that part off, they slapped that on there, and then just kind of shaped it to look like the part that's missing. But now let me show you what happens when you shine a light through this. Oh yeah, that's so cool. Why couldn't there have been a light inside this guitar? That would have been cool. Now I get it. What happens when the light dies or breaks, it'd be hard to fix. But they could have put a light on a string in here that you could take in and out that's powered by a 9 volt battery. Just put a battery cover on the back because where's the blue? It's really hard to see. 
I'm thinking this black finish is actually a special kind of black because it looks way darker than most black guitars. Like there's different grades of black. There's like some blacks that absorb almost all light. And I'm thinking this is one of the darker ones, but the blue one here, you put the light on it. It's like, yeah, that's cool. It just feels like they kind of skimped out for this stuff. I mean, they took the time to put the imitation crystal on this thing and just didn't quite do everything that the game did. Something else with the crystal parts of the body is if you look at it at an angle, you see that kind of pinkish hue? That is just the wood of the body reflecting in that. But that's really only apparent on the purple one for the most part. The blue one, if you shine the light in it, you can see the wooden body right there. But the body itself, it's routed like a regular Stratocaster. So if you wanted to modify this with humbuckers, uh, you're going to have to ruin your investment because it's just routed for three single coils here. And this is what the control cavity looks like. But let's talk electronics here. So what kind of pickups do we have in here? They're the V-Mod series pickups. They're just a single coil, regular Stratocaster stuff essentially. Looks like we have CTS 250K pots in here, as a lot of these Fender exclusives have been having. And there you can see your limit break pot right there and the style of selector switch on here. I will be honest though, the wiring kind of feels cheap. Like it's not the highest quality wires that they're using. Like it would have been nice to see the braided wires in here is what I'm saying for the price point. Something else you might not have noticed about this pickguard, it's single ply. It's actually really thin and flimsy due to that, but that was for the whole aesthetic. This thing is just supposed to disappear into the blackness. So, I mean, you can't really blame them for that. I mean, I guess they could have made it thicker, but I think they really just wanted it to have that shallow profile. But here's what the pickups look like on the outside. They've also got the black covers. What's interesting is the height adjustment screws are completely black, whereas the securing screws are a black chrome. But speaking of black chrome, that's what our tailpiece looks like. Regular Stratocaster style, six individual saddles that read Fender. And we saw our trim bar earlier. As far as the output jack, it's also done up in the black chrome. And that's what that looks like in there, nothing too fancy. As far as the controls, it's a master volume for everything. Then you have a tone just for your neck pickup and then a tone for your middle and bridge. And once again, you push that down to put that up and this puts it into series mode. So it's supposed to sound kind of like a humbucker. So we'll have to see what the limit break sounds like on this. Now, obviously I think this guitar would look much better without the plastic covering on it. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. All right, this thing's starting to look a little bit better now. It's just not exactly what I thought it was. So this is just meant to be like the deepest black Stratocaster you could find. Okay, let's go ahead and grab our pickup readings. Our neck position reads 5.82K ohms. Middle position, 6.12. Just our bridge, 6.06. .06. In-betweens, 3.08. And these two at three. Now let's test that limit break. That seems to be about what I would expect. And that appears to work in any position that has the middle or bridge within it. So that's one, two, or three. You can get that whole limit break thing. That's good to know. Now this could just be me, but I think this finish is slightly more scratch resistant than most black finishes too. But the real test will be once I've actually played it. But moving on from that alder body, we have a maple neck with a rosewood fretboard. Not just any rosewood, they called this in the spec sheet, selected rosewood. I don't really know what that means. <laughs> Maybe they just selected really nice looking rosewood for these guitars. But we've got 21 narrow tall frets and they are very shiny. Fender Japan's usually pretty good about that stuff. And of course we've got our 12 fret Meteor inlay. But it's a nine and a half inch fretboard radius, so slightly modern Stratocaster. And the regular 25 and a half inch scale length. Nut width is 1.67 inches. That increases to 2.04 by the 12th. First fret neck depth is 0.86 and beeps up to 0.96 by the 12th. Wow. It's advertised as a modern C-shaped neck profile, but the numbers get really beefy up here. I mean, it feels a bit bigger, but not as much as the numbers make it seem. Here's the neck at the first fret and the 12th fret. Definitely a very rounded C-shape. But moving on to the face of our headstock here, the Fender logo is silver and it's a reflective material. So it's kind of like the uh, Fender Ultra series, how they have those golden ones. And you do have truss rod adjustment at the top of the neck and the rosewood looks different right here because it's got the gloss finish over top of it. But interestingly enough, we have the vintage style Fender tuners in a black chrome. So it's the type that you poke the string down and then wrap it around and a single old style string tree. As far as QC goes, there's like a, a few like 
stings on the headstock. At first I thought that was just like dust, but then I tried to clean it off and it didn't go away. So there's a couple of those on the headstock that came from the factory like that. I'm not quite sure what it is. Like if you run your nail along it, you can kind of feel it, but thankfully they don't show up from too far away. But now let's move over to the back side here. So it does have a plate on the back. It just looks like this. It is also single ply, just like that pick card. Feels a little bit sturdier than the pick card though. And here's what the trim system looks like. Not, not the highest end trim I've seen. Non-magnetic material, if that means anything to you. Three springs stock from the factory looks like this. So the more and more I'm thinking about this, you really have to build your own display for this that has like an LED light shining from behind it to get that glowing effect. It seems like you'll have to do a little bit more work if you want to display this and have it be glowing just like in the game. But regular Stratocaster contour, you've got your regular strap button locations in the black chrome, but your maple neck on this one is all covered over in the same black finish. That moves on up to the neck to our serial number here, which dates it to 2021 with our black chrome style tuners. Looks like they installed that one just a, a tad crooked, which is surprising because Fender Japan is usually really good for QC. Here's a look at our neck plate, Final Fantasy XIV Online. I was curious if this would display well in like a black light case. And the crystal does glow a slightly different color than the rest of the guitar. Let's check out the blue. Okay. You might be able to get away with doing that, but you would definitely have to have the black light coming from behind, not necessarily in front of. Well, maybe you could get away with doing that, but I think it would look better with just like a regular light shining on those areas. But hey, our side markers do glow in the dark like that. Cool. But that's just because of the black light. It's not because they actually glow in the dark normally. The last spec to capture today is the weight, 8 pounds, 3.3 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how it sounds. Let's go ahead and run through the tones of this thing. Gotta say, it doesn't sound anything like I was expecting. Like I was listening to a bunch of people cover some songs from the series and it's like, okay, not exactly what I was going for, but it's like a really angry Stratocaster is the best way to put it. So that was just your neck pickup that you heard. Compare that to the middle position. Then of course the bridge. And the in-betweens. Then of course you also have your limit break, which is these two pickups in series once again. And they describe it as humbucker-esque. To me it just kind of sounds like a slightly fatter single coil. Like it has the darkness of a humbucker, but still kind of the strattiness. Let's have some fun with it. Thank you. 
So it's pretty nice sounding for a Stratocaster. Now let's go ahead and throw some distortion on it. So I hope that gives you a brief idea. It's a really angry Stratocaster. Like these pickups are really noisy. I know single coils have a hum to them, but these ones are extra noisy. But that neck pickup sounds great for fat, juicy beats. That bridge is spanky. I can't say I care too much for the the parallel switch as compared to everything else But if you need to get rid of some of the hum it comes in handy for that <laughs> Now that we know all about the Final Fantasy Stratocaster, what are my final thoughts on this thing? 
As a Strat, this thing is angry and sounds fantastic. However, as I was saying earlier, it just didn't really match what I saw in my head for this thing. It certainly sounds better than the MIDI sounds that are in the game, though. <laughs> But overall, I just feel a, a sense of this is not worth 3500 bucks. They did not deck this out the best that they could for that price point. Oh, that's kind of cool. You can see the pick card through the crystal there. I hate to keep bringing up that point, but, you know, these crystals should have lit up somehow. They could have done it if they really wanted to, especially at 3500 bucks. This is one of those ones where if you're a super fan and you like the collectible nature of this, go ahead and buy it. I mean, these things are gonna sell out quickly anyways and become a future collectible. What I say in this review and demo really doesn't matter. People are gonna buy these anyways. But I think you could build your own parts caster version of this guitar pretty easily. I mean, take any Strat body, get some sort of a blue crystal, chop off the horn, glue it on there, shape it, sand it. I mean, it might look a little bit more crude as compared to this limited edition collectible. Finish it up in black and actually put lights in it. And I think you could get something very similar for a lot cheaper. But hey, I am glad that Fender is partnering with these video game companies. I think it's a very interesting demographic now that people that grew up with video games and whatnot and they're liking guitars, it's just an interesting thing to kind of blend together. I feel like we could have got a cooler case other than just their general made in China case that has a little placard stuck to it. And the case candy was a little bit underwhelming as compared to Asuka's. But as far as a playable instrument, yeah, this thing was nice. The nice jet black finish does kind of grow on you though. So if you're a big fan of this franchise, go ahead, by all means, buy one of these things. You will enjoy it. However, for anybody else out there, I mean, 3,500 bucks will get you a lot of guitar. And that's just retail pricing. Who knows what'll happen to these things in the future. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed checking out this guitar with me. If you're new to the channel, I upload every day guitar related content between reviews and demos, hunting for guitars online. We just have a lot of fun on this channel. All right. Thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. As always, if you're interested in being the next owner of one of these demo guitars, you can check them out on my website, troglisguitarshow.com. There's some links in the description.